relationship-driven, diverse-by-design education. The first issue we would like to address is the school shift for traditional learning styles and away from individual competency-based learning. We offer to attend here. <laughs> we offer to attend a competency-based school because we didn't want something traditional. If we wanted to go memorize content for Common Core standards or have our worth measured by test scores, we would go to one of the many traditional options available. What we want at Crosstown and what was originally promised to us is competency-based grades and individual learning plans that meet students at the level they're at. Learning should be set up in a way that meets us as individual students where we are. If a student is above grade level work and they're taking initiative and doing the work, they should be allowed to excel and get credit for it. And if a student needs extra time and help to understand a concept or is falling behind, they should be able to get the extra help they need. This brings up the issue of the grading scale. Our recent report cards absolutely horribly reflected students' academic achievement. Students who are obviously doing extremely well in their classes and who are, and who by competency-based standards are well beyond mastery in certain subject areas receive failing grades. One failing grade on a report card may not matter to you, and as much as I wish it didn't matter to us, the reality in our society is that grades affect everything. Our high school transfer transcripts affect what colleges we get into and in turn dictate a lot of our future. Not only that, but on an individual le level, report cards affect a student's home life and in turn the self-worth and mental stability. A majority of us have not seen competencies being used in classes. This is not a fault of our teachers. Our grading scale has almost completely shifted to that of a traditional high school and competency-based mastery assessment only account for 40% of our grade when it should be 100. It's not just how our learning is being assessed, that's the problem, but the curriculum we're being forced to take part in. The entirety of the 10th grade is taken in environmental science class when we all, when all we've learned is the movement of tectonic plates, the layers of Earth's atmosphere with the rock cycle. This is the content we all learned in middle school. Last year we took Bio Last year we all took biology, and it was our understanding and expectation that this year we would take chemistry with the possibility of a physics course. But instead of taking a rigorous or even grade level science course, we're all being lectured on content from the seventh grade. Additionally, every single sophomore is taking algebra two. Last year, some of us took algebra one and others took geometry. Due to something unknown to us, everyone from algebra one just skip the entire year of geometry and will have to take it their junior year. This confusing course selection just furthers the notion that Crosstown is straying further away from individualized learning. We should have courses offered that align with students' needs and ability. We shouldn't just be stuck with classes that either don't challenge us or are beyond our skill level just because of a mistake on the school's part. Furthermore, we're, su we, we're supposed to have some sort of choice in the courses we take. Possibly, as a combined result of frustrating course curriculum, a misunderstanding due to lack of communication from administration, and additional isolated concerns, students are worried that we won't have enough credits to graduate. Crosstown requires 25 credits, credits to graduate, where else the state of Tennessee requires 22. But the concerned students have raised concerns about the 30th rate that we might not have, we might not even meet the lower benchmark. The main issue that has sparked most of, the, most of the collective frustration of the student body is the cohort model. Fundamentally, there is nothing wrong with the idea behind the current cohort model. The issue is how it's being implemented. There is an unfair distribution of students between the two 10th grade cohorts that, whether intentionally or not, limits diversity in both cohorts. A large majority of black and minority students in the 10th grade are in cohort B whereas most of the white students are in cohort A. Many of the students in 10B feel that 10A has far more privileges in terms of academics, academic opportunities and structure. Due to the fact that cohort B holds most of the minority and black students, this seems 
this seems, whether done intentionally or not, to reflect bias. Whether this was an intentional, in, intentional or not, it is besides the point. Another fundamental principle of Crosstown High is that it is meant to be diverse by design. The fact the fact that either the school deliberately segregated its students or ignored race as a factor in splitting up the courts, creating an unintentional lack of diversity, proves that the school obviously isn't, feeling, isn't fulfilling its original mission of designing a racially and culturally diverse classroom experience. While there are issues that span across the entirety of Crosstown High School, cohort can be based a unique set of challenges in our education. One of the most obvious disadvantages of unfairly placed in cohort B is the disparity in the number of faculty members. Despite both cohorts having the same number of students, 10A has six teachers while 10B has only four. Another difficulty surrounding 10B is that each of our core teachers, except for one, are currently filling positions other than those they were originally hired for. Our faculty is being placed with an unfair burden of last minute preparation, coordination, and expansion beyond what can be reasonably, reasonably expected of them. As a result, the education my peers and I have suffered. Most notably, this appears in our environmental science course. While 10 has been receiving a comprehensive course class education since the beginning of the school year, we have yet to actually have a real academically rigorous class in our environmental science course. Not only is the actual course of environmental science, as opposed to chemistry or physics, a hindrance to our education, but the lack of curriculum and information in 10 lessons provides us with no preparation for academically challenging situations like those found in college and limits the potential opportunities for those interested in pursuing careers in STEM fields. Advisory, which is a program that was promised to be implemented for all four years, has been used this year in cohort 10A, but has not been implemented in 10B. This is an opportunity that was promised to all students, yet it has only been given to the more fortunate cohort, 10A. A major theme seen in each of these issues is an apparent lack of organization. The course selection, the faculty changes, the massive overhauls of what is most crucial and foundational to Crosstown High School, all exacerbated by a lack of communication and obvious disconnect between both students and faculty and faculty and the administration. This disorganization and communication deficit creates an intensely negative environment that is not conducive to our education. As a result, it has become very difficult to have confidence in our school, our administration, and our education. It is becoming increasingly obvious that we have a need for a change here at Crosstown High. Students and parents have repeatedly threatened to leave the school because they don't feel confident that they're getting the learning experience necessary for success. We have explicitly expressed our concerns, so the question remains, how do we move forward? We as students are willing to work with the school to improve our learning experience. In fact, we demand to have a voice in any future changes made. We have several proposed solutions which cons constitute our list of demands. Two non-voting student representative positions, one male, one female, on the board of trustees. These students would be democrat democratically elected by the student body, and the only requirements for these, these positions are that the students must be upper class, a member of any grade, excluding freshmen, and must maintain a GPA of 3.5 or higher. A group of students whose names are listed below who will work with administrators to create, to create solutions to the problems we have listed above until an official student government election can be held. A promise from the leadership at Crosstown High that from, now, that from now forward, student voice will no longer be ignored. Once student government and the, and the student representatives on the board are elected, those positions have to mean something. As a school that preaches about valuing student voice, we want a guarantee that the student will work with students to ensure that the school will work with students to ensure that we have a significant influence on the current and future experience at Crosstown High. While we believe that Crosstown has many issues that need to be addressed, this is no way a single of defeat. We have faith in the resilience of our school, the perseverance of our faculty, and the passion of our student body. To solve these issues and realize the ideals Crosstown was founded on, providing an equitable an equitable, student-led, competency-based education in a community of hard-working students and teachers.